Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Brethren and sisters in the park. Christian and non-Christian. Brothers and sisters in humanity. I come here to testify. I come here to testify that Jesus Christ is God. That Jesus Christ is Yahweh. That Jesus Christ is the one true living God. Hallelujah. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the one true Lion of Judah. Glory be to his name. There is none like him. He's the one true living God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. The Lord thy God is one. There's none besides him. There never was and there never will be. From the time that it was, he was there. Shaping all things according to the perfect majesty of his will. I, I belong to him. I stand with him. And no one can snatch me out of his hands. No one. Excuse me, excuse me. No one can snatch me out of his hand. No one. Because he's the Lord of hosts. He's a bright morning star. And he's before all things. All things were created by him, through him, and for him. It was he who spread the stars across the sky and called them constellations. It's he who stretched out the heavens by his mighty hand. It's he who laid the foundations of the earth. Hallelujah. It's he who summoned the wars to come together and he called them seas. My living God. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. I come to testify that he's the one true living God and there's none like him. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the everlasting to everlasting. All the number of his years are infinite and unsearchable. Oh, I know my Redeemer lives. It's he who dwells between the cherubim. It's he who sits up on the highest, holiest place with eyes of flame and fire, with his robe filling the temple. Hallelujah. He called to me and I answered. He sent me here. He sent me here and he told me to tell you what I've seen and what I've heard. And that is this. That a time when the Lord overlooked the ignorance of mankind has long since come to an end. Now the Lord commands everybody everywhere to repent. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Behold, he said, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will enter into him and dine with him and he with me. So if today you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Nobody knows by him when the clock will strike and your time will be up. Don't make lie of your eternal soul. Don't make jest with your eternity like they did with Noah. They laughed at him. They mocked and they ridiculed him. They sat around, they drank and they made merry and they said, oh, we don't care. There's peace and security in the land. And all of a sudden, destruction fell upon them like the pains of a pregnant woman about to give birth and there was no escape. Because the rains came and the depths of the oceans opened up. They scrambled and they clambered for their ark. But the doors had already shut to them. Turn to me and live, says the Lord, before you, you would likewise perish. Behold, I come quickly. Don't be caught sleeping. Two will be in the field. One will be taken and the other one left. Hallelujah. Two will be in the house. One will be taken and the other one left. These are the last days, the last days we're living in. Look at the signs and the times around you. Signs that the Lord spoke about 2,000 years ago. They are here today. You have earthquakes, 
tsunamis, in diverse places, wars and rumours of wars, brother rising up against brother, children having children. These are the last days we're living in. The last days, keep watch, for many will come to you with a counterfeit message. <clears throat> Study it closely. For many false prophets have gone out. Study it closely. Ask questions. Do your research. Then confirm in your own time that the answers that they've given you are genuine. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Many. They deny. They deny that Jesus Christ is the Holy Son of God coming to flesh to atone for the sins of mankind and give his life a ransom for many. Hallelujah. They deny. They deny. Preach it, brother. Like him, they deny. They deny that Jesus Christ was crucified under the Roman rule of Pontius Pilate. He was entombed and then three days later, by the power of God, was resurrected and appeared to over 500 witnesses. They deny the historical, the archaeological, and the geographical evidence. They deny. They even want to deny the renowned evidence of Roman, Jewish, Greek, atheist, agnostic, and Christian scholars. They even want to throw out the massive manuscript evidence that we have. In the Greek, numbering to over 5,800. The text of which correlates nearly 100% to the New Testament that we have today. But to them, that's not enough. To them, that's not enough. It's not enough. They would rather follow a doctrine of demons that seduced them into a full sense of security by legalizing their evil pagan practices and feeding their carnal desires. They'd rather turn away from the truth, twist biblical scripture, than circulate defaming propaganda about the children of God. He thinks his knowledge is spiritual. They have been spiritually comatose, fat with the wickedness of pride, when they don't even realize that they themselves have been deceived into thinking they're doing God's work. When they're not, oh God, they've been sent the spirit of the Antichrist. They've been sent a strong spirit of delusion to believe that lie. Do not follow them. Do not put your foot in the path with them. Because they have eyes, but they cannot see. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. So you say to me, hey brother, hey brother, if not by this fool, how then are we saved? How then are we saved? How? Well, we know not one of us is righteous. Not one of us is righteous. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. We can't appease the wrath of God by our good works. Because all our good Lord works are like filthy rags to him. Because he's holy and we are not. He thinks he's holy when he's coming. This guy is Ignore him. Furthermore, furthermore, we can't justify ourselves by works of the law. How? Because it's the appearance of the law that brings us under condemnation and exposes our sin because we're not capable of keeping the law. Because if we go to keep one part of the law, we have to keep it all. And who can do that? Who can do that? Who can keep the law? Nobody. No one. So we know that the law can't save us. We know that works can't save us. And we know we can't save ourselves. So what then? Oh, the almighty, unconditional love of the Lord it never ceases and it never comes to an end. Because he delivers, he rescues, he would send us a saviour. Because he works wonders in heaven and on the earth. He would do that. 
It was he who rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. It was he who rescued Jonah from the belly of the whale. It was he who rescued Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fire of the furnace. It was he who rescued the Israelites from 400 years of bondage. Then he will rescue us. Surely he will rescue us. He will send us a blessed hope, a pearl of great value. The one who will be despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. The Messiah, the Redeemer, the one who would come from Zion and remove all ungodliness from the house of Jacob. He would appease the wrath of God and be the propitiation for our sins. He would do that. So God in his wisdom, he established prophets. Great men of old who spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. They spoke of the one to come. Men like Isaiah, 700 years BC, he spoke of him. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his government shall be on the body's shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David, and over his kingdom to order and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever for the zeal of the Lord of hosts he will perform this so believe on the name of Jesus Christ because there is one name not Allah not Krishna not Vishnu one name under heaven whereby man must be saved and if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that Christ, God, raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is a promise of God. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not a serpent that he should deceive. His words are true. So believe in the name of Jesus Christ. For he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ. He came to give you peace. He said, come unto me, all those who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take unto yourself my yoke, because my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ. You'll be born again in the spirit, a new creature, a new creation. All things will pass away before all those things will become new. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ, because he laid down his life so that we could live, and then he took it up again. So that we might be justified by faith in him. Hallelujah. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ. He's the answer. He's the anointed one. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Nissi. He's El Shaddai. He's Adonai. He's the new covenant, he's the chief cornerstone, he's the advocate, he's the last Adam, he's the great physician, he's the great high priest. He's the true vine, he's the Lord of the Sabbath and he's the good shepherd. He's the way, the truth and the life, he's the bread of life, he's the resurrection and the life, he's my rock and my sword and my shield, he's the author and finisher of my faith. He's the one who holds the keys to death and Hades because he comes to the grave and rolls the stone away.